Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about a situation that has a lot of people really, really pissed off. I think this is the most requests I've gotten for a particular topic in a while. And the topic is Caroline Constanar, Constner. Not really sure about the last name, but I do know that Caroline's here on the internet. It usually there's always a mess around a Caroline. But anyway, there's this YouTuber, her name's Caroline. I'll show you her videos in a second. Basically, she did a, I'm not sure whether I wanted to call it a pregnancy prank or the more dystopian, a pregnancy promo. Basically, what happened and what made a lot of people pissed off, Caroline posted this video and we're gonna watch it together and have a little chat. So, as a little intro, she has a million subscribers, 23 videos, she's been gone for a while and this was her return to YouTube after about a year. To preface her content, her content is humorous. I don't know if I'd call it comedy, but it does include a lot of comedy. So factor that into whatever opinion you're about to have about what I'm gonna tell you. So she posts this video saying I have an announcement. As you can see in the thumbnail, she has a baby bump. So I don't think the announcement is a big secret. I'm ovulating and I had like a plug of blood come out and I was like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm 20 years old and I am figuring out what to do with my life. And I personally don't think I should have to choose to do anything in life. I think I should just do life. I think I should just not die and live and that's life. But I meet so many people around me that are encouraging me to pick a thing, to be a thing. Like everyone's like committing to a bit. That's what life feels like. I'm committing to the bit of having a relationship with this woman who I don't really like. I'm committing to the bit of having this job that I don't really like. I'm committing to the bit of living in a democracy. I'm committing to this bit. I feel like it's okay to not know what I'm doing in life because I'm young, I'm hot, I'm funny, I'll figure it out. Life will go on and I will by default be something if not dead. I'm good, guys. I'm actually so good. I want to have a kid. I just don't think I can have a fucking kid right now. And I really want a kid. I do want a fucking kid. And I'm not being stupid. I'm not being like, oh, well, you're young. You don't really know what it's like. You have so much life to live. Fuck you! I'm having a baby. Like, I'm having the baby. It's not like I'm not, it's not like I'm getting rid of it. It's like I'm having the baby. I'm going to have a baby. So I think that so far you get the vibe that there is obviously some dry humor there, which I personally always appreciate. I don't watch this channel, so I mean, even as someone who's an outsider, I think that much is obvious. I do think we should be very clear about what counts as humor in our own minds. That's a personal decision for us all and what crosses a line. For example, there's a level of dark humor that I can only use with certain people because they know me, they know where I'm coming from, and that means that they'll understand me. That level of dark humor here I wouldn't use because a bunch of people who just come across my video and have no idea who I am will not understand where I'm coming from and some shit might sound way more fucked up than it is, even though that's part of what makes it funny. That's a little aside. So as far as we've seen in this video, there were a bunch of people in the comments saying like, I can't tell if this is real. A lot of people were saying that while they were watching this video before the second one was posted, they initially thought it was a bit and then after they were kind of like 50-50 and then after that they actually believed it that she was pregnant. Even her own audience, people who say that they are part of her regular audience, were not really sure what to do with this. Also because I think the acting is actually pretty good. Like I would buy freaking out in your fucking car because you're 20 and you're gonna have a kid. I don't know if she's in a long-term relationship. I don't really care about all of that. But it's also like, is there someone that's gonna be helping you? Like who, whose baby is this? You know, cause that's kind of a big deal if you have a partner helping you versus doing shit by yourself. So those are the questions coming up. And that means that I'm already by default taking it seriously, even though I know I shouldn't be now. Me, 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 me. Remember how I had like shit going on with my uterus when I was 16? Like I had the, I had surgeries just to get stuff removed. So like my fertility's always been, kind of weird. I'm pregnant and if there's any kind of like 
surgical intervention, I could really fuck up my fertility. Like I could, I might not be able to have a kid again. And then the other thing is, is that if I have this kid, it's very likely that I won't be able to have another one. So personally speaking, this is the part that I thought was in a particular poor taste. Now, I think we all have been privy to some kind of, I'm pregnant, haha, -ha, just kidding, I'm not kind of joke. Most of those I experienced in high school, so it has been a while. I do think that the crying was believable, and I think that this is a part that pissed a lot of people off because here we really are going into the appealing to pathos phase. We are going to appeal to people's emotions to get them transported with you in your obviously fictitious experience. The mention of fertility, I think, is where a line was crossed for a lot of people. I've said this before on the channel, but I'm no longer stunned by much that happens on YouTube. My own personal dealings with YouTubers aside, which have been disastrous and low-key traumatic, apart from those dealings, I do not trust people on this website. And I know that that means I'm part of that, right? So you shouldn't inherently trust anyone on here. Of course, you make those decisions. That being said, crying about fertility and whether you can have a child again is a step. It's a choice. I will say that. I find it in poor taste, to be honest. Was I super angry? Was I pissed off? No. But Considering how real the struggle with fertility is to bring in this concept of this might be my only chance to have a kid, blah, 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 turns this like pregnancy joke slash social experiment, we'll get to all that, but it turns this joke slash promo to a level that is a lot more serious than just being like, haha, I'm pregnant. Just kidding, I'm not. Okay. So this is, I think, kind of the turning point for a lot of people. And if I'm wrong, correct me down below if there was a turning point for you. If you knew it was a joke all along, let me know. But people were pissed. Hello, one and all. I'm currently in my second trimester. And let me tell you something. Being pregnant is exactly what they say it is. It's pretty awful. It's very overwhelming to be 20 and pregnant because I'm around other 20 year olds that are like, I don't even know what I'm like doing right now. Like, I don't even know who I am or what I want in life. And I'm just like, that sounds tough. Me personally, I'm about to throw out 18 years of my life doing the most selfish thing one could possibly do. I've had friends and family reach out to me and I've just sort of casually told them that I'm having a child. I haven't really done a whole announcement, but the reaction that I get from people is so interesting because they're like, oh, that's so nice for you. I'm really glad that you're deciding to do that with your life. And I'm like, God damn, can't we make motherhood cool again? We need a new ad campaign for motherhood, seriously. With only semen, semen I harvested consensually, I am producing nature's most advanced piece of technology. It's like a new iPhone. I'm dropping, this is my Apple keynote speech. Now, is this child gonna be something exceptional? No. It's really interesting uh, thinking about coming back to YouTube with an announcement like this. Cause I've been gone for so long. I started this channel when I was 15. A lot of you have been following me since I was 15 years old and not that much time has gone by. And I'm already on to discovering new life. YouTube is not taken seriously. YouTubers are not taken seriously. That's a really frightening prospect. And the fact that a 15 year old had the ability to just influence millions of people is absolutely ridiculous and so dangerous. But now as I get older and I start to really think about my place in this world, I wonder what should I do with my influence? It's hard to express the feelings that I'm experiencing right now because there's so much fear and anxiety that is totally reasonable. What did Louis C.K. say? You have to be a little bit stupid to think good things will happen. Cause why the fuck would anything nice happen? And kind of the way that I've just been getting through life is just thinking about all that can go right. And when I think about it, I am just overwhelmed by how wonderful life can be. I hope you choke on my sincerity.
I hope you choke on my sincerity and I hope you die. Guys, stay tuned because I'm gonna be having a baby very soon. I slapped this video together just to let you all know where I've been for the past few months and where I'm gonna be in the coming months. And I really hope that I can take you on this journey with me. Thank you guys for staying here with me and being here with me and hopefully supporting me in the future. So stay tuned guys. So the end of this video, I feel like goes back to somewhat of a more lighthearted nature because we're not really talking about real life problems like fertility. It's still the ha ha he he, I'm having a baby. Life is so wonderful. I was 15 not that long ago, which again, I still think the whole thing is in bad taste, but this is a different level in my opinion than the whole fertility talk slash crying. I think that had it all just been kind of surfacey of like, I'm bringing new life into the world. I feel unprepared prepared, pregnancy sucks, my back hurts. If we stayed in that realm of what's basically just physical and didn't go into emotions and difficulties and all of that, it probably wouldn't have been that big of a deal. Like if we chopped up this video and removed some parts, I genuinely think it wouldn't have caused the mayhem it did, but because some of the parts were left in, that's really what fucked with people. The other thing I wanted to say is, I'm not belittling any 20 year olds by any means. We've all been 20, being 20 doesn't mean you're immature. I will say struggles with fertility happen for a myriad of reasons. So you can struggle with fertility even at a young age. I will say that seeing this as someone who's a decade older, knowing people who have different struggles with fertility, I think there's also a very different perspective. Like 20 year old me might've watched that thinking something very different, so obviously, I don't know how much of the target demographic I am, but certainly being older, the fertility shit hits different, I will say that. So that's also something to keep in mind and I'm sure someone 10 years older than me might have a different opinion still. Anyway, going on to the next video where she quote unquote lost the baby. Okay, guys, I lost a baby, and I don't know exactly where I put it. It it has to be around here somewhere. Okay, so some of you guys are probably wondering. No, I am not pregnant. And I'm sure some of you are shocked. I'm sure some of you are not surprised at all. I'm sure some of you don't care. But some of you might be asking. <laughs> When you're a content creator, the line between entertainment and reality is very blurred. Your audience will become very attached to an abstraction of yourself. So listen, I'm gonna start taking issue with this video right here. When you're a content creator, the line between reality and fiction can be blurred. I'm sure, especially if you're more vloggy, it kind of has to be blurred in the sense of if I were a vlogger, would I show the outside of my house no. So when I'm showing me being out and about in my neighborhood, I might be in a completely different neighborhood. Why? Because I don't want people to know where the fuck my neighborhood is. So there we're in fiction, right? But the reality is, you know, when we're in the house, if I'm having a shit day, I'll tell you I'm having a shit day. So there is a tiny bit of blur if you're in the vlogosphere. For a lot of other categories of YouTube, unless it's like skits, I feel like there's not that much of a blur. I mean, people might have personas they put on, but a lot of that is public. Like a lot of people know that persona X, Y, or Z is a persona and in real life, they're not like that. As a general notion, I don't really like the argument of saying that YouTubers have this like weird limbo space because realistically, I don't think that's the case for the majority of people. And I do think it's a cop out. And I think that if you are one of those people, you need to make it clear that there's a separation between you and who you show on camera. And I mean a big one, right? Because it's like when you do a presentation in class. Is that what you're always like? No, but it's still you. You're not pretending. You just are in a different mode. Same thing, right? When I'm talking to my friends, I probably sound a lot messier than here because I can't chop things up and take out dumb shit, I might say. But to turn it into it's all relative, it doesn't work here. And especially it doesn't work if you know what you're fucking around with. The minute, the absolute moment, you start to make quote unquote jokes or social experiments or whatever you wanna call them about death, pregnancy, disease, money. I don't know what else, but those are some of the big ones. The moments you start making 
jokes that have heavy implications about those things, you already lost. There's no blurry there. There's no, there are just some things that I think personally you just shouldn't fuck with just because it will bring you problems and at what cost. Now, is she getting publicity? Sure, but again, we return to the same thing I always say. It's like, for me, it's game over after that. And maybe I'm in the minority, so it doesn't really matter. But if I can't trust you anymore, what am I doing? Why would I watch you if I can't trust you? You know what I mean? So, and for some people, maybe it's not that deep, but I don't know. I guess my morals just don't align with that. And I think some people might be on the same page. Again, is it the end of the world? No. Is it the first time this happened? No. So is it like worth ripping your hair out over? Is it worth screaming over? No. Is it reprehensible in my opinion? Yeah. And the odd thing is that this connection can become very personally meaningful to the viewers whilst not being personally meaningful to the creator itself. Your attention is monetarily valuable to me. And unless you have some narcissistic tendencies, which a lot of us do, the experience of having a parasocial relationship with your audience can be very uncomfortable. I'll give you an example. When I was 15 and I first started making content, I had a lot of people threaten to rape me every day. And if you could imagine, this was not fun. And the problem with this beyond the obvious is that there's no meaningful way to respond to this interaction. The offender has anonymity and in some way, so do I. So I'm not treating them like a real person. They're not treating me like a real person. You're not real and I'm not real and none of this is real. And yet the effect that we have on each other is still very real. I come on the, I come, nope. I am, hold on. I will present myself on the internet because I want to desperately be seen and to connect to other people. And a lot of you come on the internet, a, no, a lot of you will engage on the internet because you want to be seen and because you desperately want to connect to someone. I lied about being pregnant as a joke. And the joke is not that pregnancy under strenuous circumstances is funny. The joke is not that the audience was gullible enough to believe that I was pregnant. The joke is you connected to something that wasn't real and I have become something that isn't real. So fun story, the mic saga continues. It might've been a sign, but my mic just gave out. It completely gave up on life, which is understandable, but if it was a sign, I'm not taking it, so let's keep going. So if there's something that will forever irk me and forever bother me, maybe as a byproduct of being in classrooms with a lot of people who acted in this type of way, so like the rage is deep-seated, it's the over-intellectualization of things that actually are rather basic and not really that deep, okay? So I think we all collectively know that parasocial relationships are unhealthy. Projecting onto people to a point is unhealthy. Thinking you know someone, getting mad at a creator for things that have really no big consequence. It's one thing if they actually do something fucked up. It's another thing if you're mad when they get a boyfriend or girlfriend and it's not you. So. There are plenty of examples of parasocial relationships and I don't really think I need to explain where the line is, where things start getting unhealthy, okay? That being said, what she's doing here is trying to make this sound a lot more intellectual than it really is because the reality is this. If I come here and I tell you something devastating, okay? Like I lost a child, much like she did. Most people, that's a sense of empathy. That's not parasocial. An average person whom you tell, even if it's a random person on the street who doesn't know you, if their emotions are well-regulated, if you tell them, I lost my child, I had a miscarriage, whatever, most people will respond with a level of empathy. They're gonna say something along the lines of, I'm so sorry, and they're going to be sad for you. That's basic empathy, that is just, putting themselves in your shoes and thinking about how they might feel or how they might feel if that happened to their wife, whatever. So that's not parasocial. That's basic human empathy, okay? Now, certainly there are people who bring it to a parasocial level, but turning it into this big PSA about why people on the internet are weird, like, she's been on the internet for long enough. People here are fucking weird. There are a lot of people who get too attached, too invested to the point where it's toxic, surely. But that does not justify anything that's happened here in my perspective. And on the contrary, it's just like, if people are already parasocial towards you, in your opinion, why would you pretend a tragedy happens to you? Because that will only 
make the parasocial more parasocial because now it's just like, oh, my fave went through this horrible thing and now my life is upside down because their life is upside down. There's a whole fucking thing going on there. So it's like the point you're trying to prove, I get it generally, I guess, but it's also like you're making things probably worse for yourself in the meantime before she declared that it was all a lie and a scam and a way to promote. We all come here to find this connection over and over again. And we don't really find it until now, when you subscribe to my Patreon. Oh yeah, that's fucking right. This entire stunt has been an advertisement for my Patreon. I'm also announcing that I'm coming back to YouTube. Listen, I wanted to come back to YouTube and explain to everyone why I had been gone and what had happened to me in that time that made me want to come back. But some of you in my audience are pretty weird and I don't blame any of you. You know, you can't help being weird, but I didn't think that it would be healthy for me to expose myself like that to all of you. And that's why I decided to keep a lot of my more sensitive information behind a paywall where I would hope some of the audience would be more intentional with how they interact with me because now it costs money to do so. Guys, I'm back. I'm back and I'm back to making YouTube content. I'm so excited to be back. What better way to return to YouTube, what more ceremonious way to return to YouTube than by bringing back the advice videos. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Not Dr. Caroline is back in the building. So if you are looking for advice because I am looking for content, be sure to email your questions and concerns to consonartquestions at yahoo.com. I'm almost certain that's the email. I could be wrong. So we find out that this entire thing is a promo for her Patreon. Now, I think us people of the internet, us people who have been around on here long enough are not particularly surprised. Is it disappointing? Is it sad the levels to which humans will go to advertise shit? Yes. But is it surprising? Did I fall to the ground like, oh my God, this has never happened before? No, there's been enough of a shit show here that I feel fully prepared for whatever's coming next, honestly. The irony here that a lot of people were pointing out in the comments is that there is a kind of circular nature in this because this is supposed to be about parasocial relationships, this entire stunt, right? Aside from uh, promoting her Patreon, it's supposed to underline parasocial social relationships. But then the joke is kind of like, oh, if you do want to have a parasocial relationship, come to my Patreon where there's a paywall. But after you pass that paywall, you can continue to have that parasocial relationship. So, so it's almost like the commentary nullifies itself. And maybe that was the purpose. Maybe this is all supposed to be some massive ironic argument. I don't know. I truly don't know what to make of any of this aside from this was obviously a publicity stunt. Basically what she is saying is so long as there's a paywall and so long as I'm getting an additional income, you can be parasocial. And then on her Patreon, she's supposedly giving people advice, which is, I don't know, but I would not go to the person who faked a pregnancy and miscarriage as a stunt for advice. I'm just saying you guys, probably Cosmopolitan has a better advice section and you know full well how I feel about Cosmopolitan. So I'm just gonna leave that there. You guys can make your own decisions. I trust you to be responsible people. <laughs> Feel like a mom right now. All of this was just very jarring to me. And like I said, it might also be that because of my age, a lot of this stuff is actually, you know, like not happening to me, but people I know, uh, you know, have issues with fertility and stuff like that. So I think my perspective is a little bit different compared to a 20 year old who for the most part, or a lot of 20 year olds aren't thinking about children and families in the immediate, right? So maybe there it's easier to make a joke out of it because it seems so far away and so distant from your current reality. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll catch you guys next time.